Hello everyone, how you doing? Welcome to another video. This is a how-to video on how to install Homebrew channel on the Wii and uh, use it to play backup games without using the disk drive. The problem that I had recently was that my disk drive on my Wii stopped working. I would put in the CD, would make some weird noises and it wouldn't recognize uh, the CD. I tried it with different CDs. None of them are working, so I don't know, it's broken. You can order a um, um, drive replacement uh, and to install it, it's like I saw some videos on how to take apart uh, the Wii and install a replacement one. It's like 13 screws or something like that. It's a ridiculous amount of screws and um, they're both Phillips screws and tri-wing screws, which i never seen in my life before. What the hell is a tri-wing? I, I guess it's only three parts. Why do they have those kind of screws? I don't know. Uh, thank you, Nintendo. So, yeah, I decided let's try to homebrew this, um, install the, the jailbreak exploit, uh, put some stuff working, and just launch my games from my uh, you know external hard drive or pen drive or SD card or whatever that works. Uh, so I looked into it, and this video is kind of like to remind myself the steps that I've been through because I'm going to forget about all this in, in three months time and this is the first time I homebrewed uh, or jailbreak and installed homebrew on a Wii so if I say anything weird that's completely normal uh, bear with me so the main website that you want to check out is webrew.com it lists, lists all the stuff there all the previous exploits that ever existed they're listed there the one that works right now and um, it's easier to just put up is the letter bomb exploit so this is what i tried and it just worked on first time so i i do recommend it uh some things that you need to get the letter bomb exploit working you need an sd card formatted on a fat 32 i already had one uh, purposely made for the wii so it was compatible uh two gigabytes enough for anyone um and then you need to go to the letter bomb website and uh select the your correct uh, menu version and mac address and for that you need to go to the wii to find out and uh, you go to we here and we settings and wait a little because it's slow the version's right here on top version 4.3 in my case and if you go to internet uh when you click on console information, it will show you your MAC address straight away. I'm not going to show it because I don't want to show my MAC address particularly. Uh, but uh, you can see it right here. Note it down on a piece of paper or type it directly to the computer. And uh, yeah, so fill out that information on um, on that on, on this. Uh, click I'm not a robot. Uh, cut the red wire or the blue wire. You'll get a zip file uh, to to um, carry on with the system. You have all the information here. You need to unzip whatever uh, they send you from that website. Please be aware that this voids the warranty on your Nintendo Wii. I'm not responsible if any damage comes out of it. Usually you shouldn't install stuff downloaded from the internet into your machines. But you know, you know last resort, uh, it's fine. Um, you copy the private folder and the boot.elf to the SD card and uh, you reboot it and you go to the Wii message board uh, and it will have a special message there that when you run it, it runs the exploit and installs boot.me or allows you to install boot.me on your system. I'm going to show you what the image looks like because I still have that Im image around. Um, why isn't this working? Here we go. Back, back, back. So you go to the thing, the message board, and it has, usually has a message for the day that you downloaded the thing. It looks like this. When you click it, you'll see a lot of uh, information happening on your operating system. It will have to reboot, and it will give you option to install uh, Boot Me. Uh, boot me can be installed either as boot 2 or iOS. I think the most modern versions of the Wii don't have uh, the option to be installed as boot 2, but it still works. Don't remember which option happened on my particular case anymore, but uh, it's working now, so that's what matters. Um, and then you uh, 
install the homebrew channel as well you have an option there to uh, install the homebrew channel and this is what you really want to do uh, it's the most important thing uh, to have and from the homebrew channel then you can do all the other stuff afterwards so i'm gonna go back here to the wii menu show you what the homebrew channel looks like once you install the homebrew channel and you reboot um you will have this particular channel available here this one will be part of your list which you can just start and whatever whatever slash apps you included on the sd card will be listed here automatically uh, and you can also install some stuff like the homebrew browser allows you to go to the internet and uh, install some stuff uh, as well so uh, there are a lot of different options, different stuff that you can install, some uh, emulators, which is interesting to have. It doesn't include the ROMs for the stuff, so you still have to get the ROMs and put them on the SD card. But you can have like ScumVM running here, emulators for the Game Boy, I think, the Mega Drive, Super Nintendo. I don't know how you're going to play a six button game uh, for the Mega Drive with only two buttons from your controller but it exists so that's that's what matters i don't know what this is doing now it's taking way too long it's trying to install the usb device which is fine but i wish it didn't because it's taking longer anyways i'll keep showing the rest and hopefully at some point this will uh move on so um if you want to uh, get a backup of your games, you have two ways of doing it. Uh, Raw Dump allows you to uh, rip your games in your Windows PC. You need a compatible drive. Um, usually they are LGs. They are listed here. There's a list of the drives that are compatible. They're not that many because Nintendo Wii uses a special way to have their DVDs, uh, the uh, CDs, um, recorded so not all the drives are compatible with that but if you have one you can use this and you can rip the um, the ESO file of the entire Nintendo game on your Windows PC and then convert it into a format that you can uh, play either on your SD card or on the HD USB uh, either pen drive or disk drive I'll get to it there's another version that you can use which is using the Wii itself there's this thing called clean rip and um, you can install it on your SD card uh, it's just a directory slash apps directory that will show up on homebrew and you can run it to um, to convert directly uh, the disk Using the, the Wii itself, it will uh, read the disk and dump it entirely to the SD card or to the disk drive that you have assigned, which is really cool. If you have a working uh, disk drive, I didn't have it, so I had to resort to other means uh, of getting my stuff working. But after you get your, uh, your dumps of your uh, games, you can use something like the Wii Backup Manager to uh, install them into an either the SD card or uh, a USB drive. Um, people recommend USB uh, disk drives instead of USB pen drives. Um, I only tested it with some pen drives. I didn't have much luck with a lot of them. Uh, Kingston ones seem to work uh, okay. I have like a mini one, mini Kingston one and a bigger Kingston one. Both of them worked fine. I hear SanDisk also works uh, pretty okay. So uh, you can try that. You just need to make sure that it's formatted as FAT32 and uh, then you run uh, Wii Backup Manager, which I will show you what it looks like. Hold on a second, wasn't planning this part, but it makes sense to also show it. Uh, it looks something like this, that's opening right now. So what happens is you select the file that you want to add here, um, and then you can uh, convert it or transfer it to uh, the disk drive that you select. In this case, if you have a pen drive activated, it will be listed here as F or G, and you can select that one. And then when you have the game selected here, you can click transfer. It will transfer directly to, um, to your 
pen drive and then you have it there. Usually you want it on the format of WSFD. WS, where was the listed? WBFS. Uh, it's the format that they use. Uh, when you rip the image for the first time, it's probably on the on the ESO format. Uh, and you want to convert it to WBFS. Um, and a Wii Backup Manager also has an option to do that. When you select the file here, you can uh, convert the WBS file from the ESO to a WBFS file format. Um, you can also get a cover artwork for it, so it will look uh, like it will get the proper names for the for the ROMs and it will get the proper covers so that when you launch it on your application on the homebrew channel you will actually see what it is instead of being a question mark like you see it exemplified here so that's it for the Wii backup manager then you want a way to load your stuff in the Wii like to load from the SD card or load from the USB uh, there are a couple options for that uh, one of them is WeFlow, which was the one that I found more reliable. Uh, it launches uh, both from the SD card and from the um, and from the um, uh, pen drives, uh, which is useful. Uh, the other ones didn't seem to to do that, um, and I'm gonna show you how it looks. We're still trying to mount the USB drive. That's not good. I'm gonna reboot the Wii. probably trying to look for the SD drive and since I have a pen drive uh, it's probably getting confused because of that come on there we go so homebrew channel boots quickly at least I think if I didn't have the SD card, the, the SD card, the pen drive on the USB, it would be okay. So uh, there are there's USB loader GX, which is one of the most famous one. This one doesn't load from SD cards, so if you have your files on the SD card, it will not recognize them. It will only try to load from the USB, and even then, it has some issues with some games. Like I try some stuff and it wouldn't load properly. I think it it. Either it was me that didn't configure the CIOS uh, that it should use properly. CIOS stands for Custom iOS, which is the custom operating system that is installed. Uh, most games expect uh, a certain uh, iOS version, and the most modern uh, Custom iOS version works pretty much with everything, but it's doubtful. One of the questions that I saw uh, on some forums when people got black screens trying to run stuff was do you have latest CIOS's installed properly and for that you have this thing called D2X iOS installer that's why it's here I had to install that put it on the slash apps uh, folder of the SD card and run it and uh, follow the steps that is listed on the website which I will show you um, just this one so if you go to wii.guide slash iOS, you, have, uh, you can download the installer. It explains that you need to uh, have a Wii with an internet connection, SD card, blah, blah, blah. And then you have to select different steps. Like for, for every different iOS slot, you have to install a different version. So make sure you install this. And then you have to install this, slightly different. So uh, do all these uh, four steps and you have all the different CIOSs installed and this should work with um, all the games that you want to, to get working on the homebrew. So I will try to exemplify how it works. So I had some issues with the USB loader GX running from the pen drive. It runs the... Um, and it doesn't detect the, um, the SD card games either. So I just don't use it and use WeFlow instead, which has been doing a lot better job. Maybe it was me that didn't configure it properly. 
uh, maybe it expects you to run stuff in a different way because I think it has the GX has some legacy or some stuff. So here are the games that are on currently on my pen drive. I have uh, three games there. Uh, should be four actually. Yeah, it's four. Okay, Super Mario Wii, uh, Fault Fall, uh, Balloon Pop, and Yenga. I also have a couple on the um, the SD card. And I think if I change some stuff here, uh, startup settings, maybe. Mount SD only. If I have this option to yes, it will only mount the SD. If I have it to no, it doesn't uh, load the SD at all. Um, and this forced load CyOS in on and auto, I think is what makes the difference between games loading here and not loading on the on the GX USB loader thing. The USB port uh, is signified to which USB you have your um, disk or pen drive connected on. I have it on the zero, so you have zero here. Uh, GX loader has an option to use both ports, but when I tried using it, it would only recognize stuff on the zero port. So I don't know. Uh... Anyways, there are some options you can go through, but pretty much uh, WeFlow seem to seem a lot more reliable to me. So this is the one that I've been using, and the games actually run from here. Um, I can play. I'm not gonna play anything because I don't want the video to be uh, thing. Um, I think you could also have GameCube uh, games on here, and they would also get listed. I don't have, you can also run stuff from the CD directly if your CD drive is working, mine isn't. I'm going to try clicking the GameCube thing to see if it works. No GameCube games found, that's okay. Uh, I wanted to show, oh, you can do plugins, okay. Does it do anything? No, that's interesting. Um, I wanted to show you my SD card contents, but I can't. Anyways, this is the, the bottom line. You can install all of, the, all of these things and then you will have all the games uh, listed uh, here. Home. So this is the channels, not the games. No plugin selected. I don't want the plugin. I want the... I don't know what the hell I'm doing anymore. Okay, so this is the stuff that is installed on the on the SD card, I think. Mm. All the apps as well. And okay, so if you click here, you cycle through the different options. Okay, that makes some sense. And this is the current uh, USB stuff that I have, which has four games. I hate this menu thing. It's it's like so weird to navigate. You want to select the next one, and you end up clicking the arrow, but you should actually click here. But then you don't have access to the menu. It's so counterintuitive. I hate this. But well, it is what it is. We learn to live with it. Um. So yeah, that's the video that I wanted to make, just to document how to uh, do the homebrew stuff on a Wii in case I ever need to do it again in the future. Hope it's useful for other people out there who have a similar issue like I did. Uh, again, I have no responsibility of what happens to your Wii if it uh, damages in some shape or form. Uh, this is against the, the, um, the warranty of your Wii. So if you do this, you're, you're, uh, you no longer will get support from Nintendo. But then again, they also they already don't have support since a few years now. So I don't think anyone cares. Anyways, use at your own risk. Uh, see you next video. Bye bye everyone. Take care.